Hey, this is Kevin Thorsell, and I wanted to make a quick tutorial video on how to um, remove and reinstall a stereo system from a 2008 Saturn View. So there's a few things you're gonna need. Uh, one of them is get yourself a new stereo. Um, the original one is a double din stereo. So you can get a double din one or you can get a single din and uh, as long as you get one of these um, adapter things that makes uh, it kind of converts the space and gives you a little extra pocket and we'll look at more at that later another thing that you're gonna need and this is kind of a bummer but you need to get a super legit um, harness uh, that is compatible with the GM car that that you have so for this Saturn view in order to um, get the steering wheel controls working and uh, OnStar working and everything, uh, you've got to have this. And then the last thing you're going to want is um, just little wire connectors. There's a different kinds that you can use, but I just got these. So first thing you want to do is just get your stereo ready to take out. So if you got any aux cables or anything connected, Take that out, get this space cleared. So take out your trash, whatever. That's step one. So this next step is not the easiest, um, unless there's a special tool, which there probably is, but we need to take off this center dash grill. So what you're gonna need to do is pull out a knife or something really thin, and there's nine clips in here that you need to remove. But once you can get something under there and pry it up, you could probably get a screwdriver over there, or I'm planning to use um, this little door panel remover. So I managed to get the first side up with a knife and now I'm gonna pry around the rest and pop that off. All right, got this piece off. There we go. And then we are just going to use a screwdriver to remove these two screws. And there's a third screw down in here you have to take this little plastic cover off, it's at the very back. And then there's a screw in there. And you need to take that off. So I just started prying at the bottom and it came right up. And then I'm going to try to keep continue prying along the sides. Okay, so you need to pull this thing out. Um, and kind of the key for any time you're working with panels like this is you need to use some force on it, but at the same time you need to be gentle with it. So it's a little finicky because you don't want to break any of the clips that are um, that are holding it in. Okay, so what I actually ended up doing was prying from the top, leaving this harness and clip in place, pulled it from the top, up around the AC vents, and then around the stereo. Then I just lift this up kind of out of the way. Now I have easy access to the stereo, and from now on it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it looks like there's actually going to be the need for a, a wrench, looks like a 10 millimeter wrench, um, and take off one, two, three, four of those, and the stereo should come out, and we just have to disconnect the harness on the back. Once you got those off, there we go, radio comes right out. Come around to the back side of the radio, you can see there's the uh, antenna connector right here and then two little plugs and that's those are the harnesses and uh, just unplug those so it turned out that um, this one was on there real good I actually had to get in there with a the screwdriver um, trying to pry on it as I pushed the clip down to pull it out this one came out no problem uh, this I just it, you know it was this one for the uh, for the radio antenna I had to just use some needle nose pliers and you actually pull this whole black thing out with it. All right, so now I'm coming inside because I don't want to work outside in the heat, but uh, we're gonna pull out our harness. Um, so there, I think there's multiple different ones that you can get, but you, like I said before, you have to get one um, that is specific for the car that you have. So um, this one, works with the 2008 Saturn view. If you go to crutchfield.com, so what I used, um, it will show you which harness matches your car. 
and which stereos are compatible with the harness and uh, it helps you out a lot so that's how I ended up figuring out which one to get so here's it all opened up um, we got all these different wires and stuff and it might look a little overwhelming at first but the key is to follow the instructions and uh, there's a little diagram on here and it shows you vaguely how to hook it up um, it doesn't look exactly like the picture does and so I have a Pioneer stereo and so I'm going to set it to uh, number seven and you do that you can see right in here you get a flathead screwdriver a small one and you're able to put it in that little slot and turn it and I'm going to turn mine to number seven so you can see I just went in there with the flathead screwdriver and turned that to seven. When you look at the diagram, um, it appears to be that this is the way that this is facing right here. And so I'm just going to start trying to find these correct things and plugging them in. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. So this is what it looks like once you've got one side hooked up. So you can see there's the two big plugs, which I've got here hanging out, and then one, two, three clips clipped in. So you can see one, two, three, and then we've got the red and white cables coming out of the side just like on right there. And then now we're going to do this next side. Okay, so now I've got this side plugged in. There's really just two things you need to plug in this one has something that looks kind of like a headphone input on it and that's going to go in the back of the stereo and this one has a couple things on it um, this I believe is going to go in the back of the stereo let's see oh no it's going to go into this little thing which is this which is the chime. So the next thing we need to do might be the most time consuming and you need to be really meticulous about it. There's all these wires and they don't have ends on them. I'm sorry, they're not connected. And so we're gonna take the harness from the stereo and it's gonna have wire ends like this and we're gonna match up the colors. So that means we have to, you know, strip the wires using wire strippers and you strip the one on this side, you strip the one on the other harness, and you attach them together. There's a lot of different ways you can attach them together. So just as an example, um, you know, we got these two yellow wires here. I stripped both of them. Um, and then what I'm going to do for my connectors is I twist them together. And then... I put one of these on them. So I'll show you what that looks like. So that's what that looks like once it's finished. So once you've done all of the cables, it's gonna look something like this, um, depending on what type of uh, cable connectors you use. And then, you know, you still got this plugged in here. And um, this is the end that's going to plug into your stereo. But before we do that, I want to show you how to set up the stereo. So here is the Pioneer single DIN stereo that I'm using. Um, in order to fit a single DIN into where, uh, where in the place where an old double DIN was, you need um, an adapter type of thing. So that's this big plastic thing. Um, one thing that I forgot to make a video of is how to get this metal piece off. Because when you get your stereo, this metal piece is actually on here. And what you have to do is Pry these little um, side tabs up with a screwdriver and you see they go up like that and there's one on each side and you pry those off or up a little bit and then it slides right off of the stereo and then what you do is you slide it into place on this adapter and there's all these little metal places that are bendable um, like little wings and what you do is you go around the whole entire thing and you pry those up with a screwdriver or some form of tool and it, it uses the pressure on it to lock it into place on here. And so um, 
you can see that if I shake it around, it doesn't really move. That thing kind of stays right there. So what you do once you have that ready is you push these tabs back in like this on both sides. So that when I pushed in, you don't need to push it in a ton, but just enough so that if you look through it, you can see that they are pointed inward. And then um, all you simply need to do is slide your stereo into place. And uh, I'm doing this one handed, but it locks in. And so now the stereo is actually locked into place on this thing. All right, so it's nighttime here, so that's why it's a little dark. Um, but I'm back here in my car and we're about to hook up the harness and then put in the stereo that I have over here. Um, so the first thing that you're, you're gonna wanna do is hook up the new harness to the existing harness that's in the car. And uh, then we're going to um, plug in the um, radio adapter. So this is, this is the radio adapter. I actually had to plug it in here. So this, this part is where uh, it attaches to the car. And that used to be plugged into the old radio. And uh, then this is an adapter that plugs into the new radio. This is a um, cable for a Bluetooth microphone. Um, because this stereo is Bluetooth and so I just ran this um, I found a way to run it through here and up under the steering wheel but this can clip on anywhere um, it can clip on on your visor um, somewhere on the, underneath the steering wheel or some people like to put it above the steering wheel somewhere um, next to the speedometer uh, wherever you can get this thing to where the microphone is pointing towards your face uh, then th that will make it usable. So I'm going to plug in the harness and plug in the radio and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So that's just a peek at the, how those things snap into place and then the harness comes and uh, clips in there. So I just clipped that in there. Um, then you've got these red and white wires. Um, you actually want to make sure that the red and white things are plugged into the first two, not the second two. So this is the Bluetooth microphone that I was showing you. It goes in the top right there. And then the last thing we need to hook up is this. And so um, we're gonna plug that in over there. So that's what that looks like plugged in, pretty simple. And then the last thing uh, it's not something we need to plug in, but it's something that we need to mount somewhere, and it's the chime. Uh, you want to put this somewhere where it's not blocked too much by a bunch of stuff, uh, because this is what's gonna, what you're gonna hear beep and stuff when when you, uh, you know, leave your keys in your car and whatnot. And then what you want to do is kind of gently, you know, put all of the cables in, um, in the harness and you know, everything back in there and then uh, start to get your stereo in place. For me, I've tried playing music through the radio, through the aux cord, through Bluetooth, and it is not working very well. The volume is extremely quiet. So I'm gonna check my harness and see if I have anything hooked up. I, I just moved this to here before it was here. And you know, that's on the harness and this whole thingy. Um, and so I'm wondering if, even though the instructions seem to have it right here, it also fits here. So I'm wondering if, if this is going to fix it. So I'm going to give that a shot, um, and see if we get some music coming out. So that was the problem. Uh, it was just plugged into the wrong place. And now we got some music coming out. Now all we got to do is put the radio back in here, tighten everything up and put the trim back on. So when you're all done, hook everything back together, put your trim on and uh, you know, get everything back in place and listen to some music.